advice for parents. That's the hardest part as parents, is put, letting people go out and make mistakes. If they fail, that's okay, because it's all part of the learning process. You know, that not everything works all the time, and, but we'd be willing to let go. That's the struggle that as parents we have, trying to figure out how much to push someone to be included, how much to shelter them, how much support to give people. It is about letting go and letting risk. I mean, you, you have to take a risk to achieve your dream. And they had a lot of independence and skills and motivation and they could problem solve a lot better than I gave them credit for. If I didn't have parents encourage me to, to achieve my best, then I would not be here today. Families are always going to be told what their kid can't do, whether it's by a pediatrician, by a general ed teacher, by a counselor, they're always going to hear that. What they need to be doing is thinking about what can my kid do and how can we help make that happen. Just being patient and uh, not giving up. It's easy to get caught up with the demands and the stresses and the IEP meetings and the doctor's appointments and just life that you kind of forget and it creeps up on you. All of a sudden your kid's turning 22 and they're about to age out of the system, but have you stopped and talked about what the future could and should be? Give them lots of responsibilities at home. Um, make them do chores. Expect it from them. Be involved in the IEP meeting. If the families and the students show up for all the IEP meetings, it helps a lot if the teachers, the job coaches, and the families are all on the same track. You know, being heavily involved with the, the IEP, have Voc Rehab come to your IEP meetings after age 14. You know, call, to, call the office and find a Voc Rehab consultant. Utilize the networks everybody has, whether it's family, whether it's business connections, school connections. Any uh, groups in your community that are associated with uh, people with disabilities, be a part of that. It really helps with the networking. Let them know that you're an informed parent and you know what to expect from the system. And, and the advice that I always give to family members is please remember that you're not going to be around forever. So you need to start from the very beginning uh, helping your son or daughter to, to live without you being around. This is their life, and their life is determined by the choices they make. And they have the right to figure out what it is they want to do for living, for where to live, how to live, um, what sort of home, what sort of job. And all those decisions are theirs to make. But with that comes great responsibility. What are age-appropriate expectations socially? What are age-appropriate expectations in the community? We need to have high expectations. Do your sons and daughters make choices for themselves? Their life isn't really confined to, you know, television, video games, and the classroom environment. Be able to advocate for themselves. Be able to express their needs, their desires, their wants, their dreams, and their capacities to others. An adult with a disability is an adult. A child with a disability grows into an adult who happens to have a disability, but they're not a perennial child who wants to be nor should be treated as a child. Fear of letting go is perfectly natural. Let the student call me. Don't you call me. Let them call me. Let them keep in touch with me and not do it for them so they learn that level of independence. Dare to have dreams of possibilities for your sons and daughters. Be really creative and be open to what's possible. Your son or daughter can go to work and earn money and not lose their Social Security benefits. So Social Security has wonderful work incentives so that people can go to work and maintain their benefits, which they need. And once they know that wages are going to be reported and that, yes, the Social Security check may diminish, but they're going to have more in their pocket, based on cash that they're getting on their job, that usually alleviates a lot of their worries. 
find services for your child as early as possible. APD, you need to be linked up with APD as soon as you know that your child has a disability so you can get on the wait list. So that when a person is ready to graduate, hopefully they will be on the waiver by that time. And when a person's on the waiver, we can offer a variety of services. But one of the best is extended follow-along services. For those students who graduate at the age of 22, they can come right into APD services seamlessly if they are on the waiver. So once somebody's on a job, we can provide lifelong support to them. Vocational rehab is another great resource that parents need to be linked up to so that there's some uh, services, so that we have a full continuum of services after students leave us at 22. Even before graduation, they should be involved with vocational rehabilitation. And VR will pay for those initial intensive services. And after that, the Agency for Persons with Disabilities can pick up the long-term follow-along support, which also includes replacement meaning if somebody loses their job, it would be up to the APD provider to replace that person on, on a different job. Keep coming back to what you would do with your typical kid in terms of trying to provide as many different opportunities to see the kinds of things where they excel. There are no limitations um, other than limitations that we place. It's because of their high expectations that I'm probably living out my dream, my dream. We invite you to view the employment success stories included on this DVD. 